Hi, we're Lavinia and Kayla and we're from Generation Ag. And we're here in the southern rangelands chatting to pastoralists about some of the new technologies they're implementing on their properties. So for these guys, technology is vastly becoming one of the biggest tools for arid stations to survive and thrive during these changing times and climates. On our first station, we chatted with Jack and his wife, Jasmine. We chat with how Jack has integrated their remote watering monitoring system and gate monitoring and provided Wi-Fi connection throughout their station. We ended up in 2014 buying the station and I came from precision and background. I was living in Ballarat, working for a John Deere dealership. Yeah. Got the phone call saying, hey, do you want to come home? And I just never went back. Tell us, where are we <laughs> geographically? We are in the Shire of Waluna, the very northern yeah. edge of the gold fields. 300 k's from Waluna, 300 k's from Laverton. It's a 400,000 hectare property, so just over one million acres for the old terms. And Just casually. Yeah. <laughs> so our remote monitoring system is unique because it gives us live stream videos to our water points. It gives us wireless access out there. So you've got high speed communications to the rest of the world. You know, instead of a sat phone, you can just use your normal mobile phone. We're sitting here where I have a coffee and some wheat bix in the morning. And while I'm doing that, I can pull my phone out and have a look at my water points. Having that, it means that I can be anywhere in the world. It means that we can go away as a family. Being able to give you that, that physical break from the property without the anxiety and that underlying feature of just stress about the water. Where we can see agriculture going is it's going to be automated. Well, what we've determined is you need high bandwidth connectivity to be able to run everything that you want to, such as AI recognition for animals. Close that automatic gate, move them across to the next point, virtual fencing, AI recognition on the cattle, just all of it from sitting, having your coffee in the morning and making those decisions while eating your breakfast. Jack stays a shorter. He's not out all day, every day, checking on the waters. It helps Jack to develop a better connection with the kids as well. And the more that the kids go with Jack, the more that they love it. Our second station, we met with Maine and his business partner, drone pilot Nigel, who are utilising industrial sized drones to track wild dogs. in Bunbury, we've got a cattle and sheep farm down there, and then I went to university, did an ag science degree, uh, that was right at the the crash of the wool price, which is a bit harsh after I came straight out of uni, living on $40 a week. Lost my first 80 grand the first year, and that was pretty easy. That's all in good putting these baits around the outside, but what's in the middle? I thought, oh, I'll get a drone to go in there, but all the little leisure type drones, they only fly for 15 minutes. So I hunted around to try and find somebody with a long flight drone through a friend of a friend. I met Nigel. And I rang him up out of the blue and just said, oh, look, I've got, I've got a station up there. And he said, oh, I don't know anything about farming. So I just said, oh, well, he, hear us out. And I said, oh, can we fly a drone in there and potentially see what's in there? And he said, oh, that's easy. And we built, built our first drone. Just got another grant a couple of weeks ago to, to add some species recognition systems on it. Nigel, now's probably a great chance for you to introduce yourself. My background, my parents were in you know, poultry farms. Obviously all of us boys wanted to do something else and so we all went and got engineering degrees and started flying helicopters when I was 15 and then started doing competitions around the world with aerobatic helicopters. And then with my engineering degree, started designing helicopters. Obviously Maine and I got on like a house on fire and loved the country and saw the opportunity to try and get tech in the ag space and you know, 72 baits in a bait carousel just with a you know, relatively small helicopter drone we could cover large areas and then it really opened our eyes you know what could something with a hundred kilo payload do while we're in the air if we can get maximum amount of smarts on the machine and do the maximum number of jobs while it's in the air that's that's where your efficiency comes in 
so ultimately we sort of think that you could have a drone flying around with a LiDAR system on it which measures your above ground biomass and then also have your smart tags, the smart tags in your cattle uh, and or sheep and, uh, and then you've got a tag reader in your, in your drone. I think people understand that, that technology is something that's going to come into every facet of agriculture and uh, the rangelands is the same.